Hey, everybody, back again for the DLF Trade Show, the best trade-based show on the DLF YouTube stream. Yeah, baby, that's two, three weeks running. Hope, I mean, I hope that doesn't change, <laughs> unless I create another trade show on the DLF stream, in which case I'm fine with number one and number two. Doesn't matter which is one and two. There you go. Yeah, that's just, the plan. Just putting it out there that, you know, I might be coming for us. I don't, yeah. I get bored. I'm sorry. We are here for the DLF trade show, at least for now. We are here to take you on a 360 degree tour of one player's trade value. And we got a suggestion. That's the word that people use when they suggest something. A suggestion for Tyreek Hill, which I love because this is a man that has, <laughs> here's a guy who has uh, been floating around that top three wide receiver dynasty value wise, but no one knows where to place him. And that makes it really hard to trade him. It makes it very player GM dependent on what the value you're going to get for him. So I'm super thrilled that we're doing this because, yes, he he scores a lot of fantasy points. How he does it nah, is a little whatever sometimes. But I mean, he showed us just in the first two weeks of the season how he scores fantasy points. He had exactly like 200 yards uh, and two touchdowns in week one and then had like two catches last week. So. Yeah, my favorite thing of Tyreek Hill, it was the first like fantasy football player nickname I came up with. Of course, I it's a terrible nickname, so I never really pushed it and it didn't really stick. But to me, he was always the, the fantasy prairie dog. You know, prairie dogs have that thing where they just stick their head out of the hole and drop back down. And if you saw Tyreek's sophomore season, it literally was week one, good, week two, bad. It was on and off, literally like up, down, up, down, up. Down. It clearly has gotten better since then. But he is that guy that can get you 40 points one week and then four the next. And that is why I think it's been tough to name him a wide receiver, one wide receiver, two wide receiver, three, but he does still score the points and that keeps him up there. So this is going to be fun. I haven't, you know, I haven't looked at the trades yet. So I'm really, I'm excited to see where this goes. So we're just jumping straight in. I'm fine. You're fine. Nobody cares. Let's go. Tyreek Hill. First, we're going to go for wide receiver, wide receiver equivalents, 12 teams, super flex. Our first trade is Tyreek Hill for Jerry Judy, Devonta Smith, and Darnell Mooney. So, okay, here we go. The trade analyzer Jerry Judy, 253.5, Devonta Smith, 215.6, and Darnell Mooney, a disrespectful 74.3. After the package adjustment comes in at 468.5. That's rough. Man, like, okay, so yeah. let's put it in terms of just picks. If we're trading Tyreek Hill for picks, two firsts and plus a little bit. I, I, I think that's where it would be, right? Yeah. I, I mean, Judy's worth the first. Devonta Smith, we just seen him get drafted in the first. And Darnell Mooney's probably worth the second-ish. In there. So, I mean, to me, this makes more sense than the analyzer, analyzer has it. This has it 674.2 to 468.5. That is separated by a first in the trade analyzer. That's a little heavy for me. Would I do this if I'm rebuilding in a in a heartbeat? I mean, unfortunately, Tyreek Hill is 27, which means one more year he Dead. hits that untouchable 28-year-old <laughs> mark. Ugh, that's that's another argument altogether. But you are like to me, this is absolutely the value. The value of two two first plus a little bit for a top three at their position makes perfect sense and it's not a quarterback which means maybe it would be more if it was so at a running back or wide receiver that's perfect which side do i want man i gotta be honest i really like jerry judy devonta smith and darnell mooney i think i take this package if i'm com completely competing is a terrible phrase like if i'm all in on this season next season like if i have a very good team maybe i don't do this just because of that ceiling that tyreek hill does have especially season long mm -hmm. but if I'm the slightest, like if I'm like more than 6% questioning if I'm going to win this year, I think I do this because on a given week, one of those guys can give you like 80% of Tyreek Hill. Right. The biggest problem for me with this trade is the fact that it is that three for one. And it's like, you know, you're turning four quarters into a dollar kind of situation here. I guess saying that Jerry Judy, Devonta Smith, and Darnell Moody all being quarters is kind of not fair completely to those three specifically um, because I do like Jerry Judy and I like what I've seen from Devonta Smith already, you know, with, with Jalen Hurts and stuff. But Tyreek Hill, this is one of those trades where it's like he's the best player. So 
if you just take the best player in the trade, I would I would do that instead, you know? And if I'm looking to downgrade from Tyreek Hill, I don't know if I want to go all the way down to these guys are being valued in my opinion, or at least from ADP in August and such like that. They were borderline wide receiver twos in Dynasty ADP. Mm-hmm. Or Judy was probably uh, borderline top 20. But Devonta Smith was borderline a wide receiver two, somewhere inside that top 30. Darnell Mooney's down there. But this seems low to me. And the fact that it's kind of like, when you're looking at it from a starting lineup standpoint as well, like you're now clogging two of your roster spots. When I know you said that on any given week, Judy or Devonta Smith, when Judy is healthy, but either one of those two could do 80% of Tyreek. Tyreek could do what Judy and Devonta Smith do in a single week. Yes. More often than not, (laughs) you know, (laughs) just every other week. Yeah. Just like he, Judy and Devonta Smith just both score 30 and then Tyreek Hill ends up in the high twenties or in the thirties as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that like, yeah, like that's a very real possibility every single week almost. So I had to think I'd take the Tyree kill side on this with, with all that being said. And I think the package adjustment is fair as well. When we look at that 75 point package adjustment, because it does heavily penalize the fact that it is a three for yes. one trade. Um, and like I said, kind of like the four quarters for a dollar kind of thing. Yeah, this is definitely not a trade you're going to do if you're competing. That's that's absolutely 100% needs to be understood. If you're competing, you don't want a three for one. At best, you want two. You know, you get someone that will score close to what Tyreek Hill. Like maybe you go, I mean, would you do, man, because the problem is like Thielen is such a sp- uh, point scorer, but he'll never have dynasty value anymore never. because he's, you know, ancient over that three zero number. I'm trying to think of like a good be like Terry McLaurin and one of and there you go. Yes, that would be very good. That I'd be more yeah. apt to do that to sound fancy. But again, if I'm not at all competing, I would absolutely do this trade. But again, if I'm in the middle or above and I want to keep competing as opposed to taking that step back, you take you take Tyree. Yeah. I am also just very in on Jerry Judy. And I, I'm just going to put it out there because I know the show isn't about him, but a six weeks in a six week injury should not affect dynasty value. I am, you know, especially, okay. Definitely in a wide receiver, Jerry Judy in a 22 year old wide receiver, Jerry Judy's value should not go right. down. I don't discount him whatsoever. Just to put it, I, do you feel any differently? No, no, I agree with you. Just making sure I just, in my Judy love, I needed to, just show that it's not just blind love that i am in fact not caring about the injury just because we're talking dynasty and it is a third of a season yeah our next trade might as well be tyreek hill straight up but it's tyreek and todd Gurley for alan robinson and chris carson <laughs> oh poor poor todd Gurley. tyreek hill 674.2 and i have to read this out because todd Gurley is at 7.7 Man, remember yeah. when he was back to back running back one? <sighs> so yeah. long ago at this point. Uh, for Allen Robinson and Chris Carson, Allen Robinson 332.3, Chris Carson 198.4. Total package for package 681.9 to 530.6. I want you to answer first. <laughs> <laughs> I want Tyreek. Um, I know we talked about like, you know, if you could do a wide receiver that will have more value and also maybe produce more than Jerry Judy and Devonta Smith, and then still get that plus one. I don't think Allen Robinson is necessarily that wide receiver that is more productive and more valuable than Jerry Judy or Devonta Smith. And I don't know if Chris Carson is the plus one that we want. Cause I mean, if you look just looking straight at it from an age standpoint, Allen Robinson is a year older than Tyree yep. Kill. So you're actually gaining age moving from Tyreek to Allen Robinson. Yeah. You're losing a lot of production just because Tyreek Kill, <laughs> you know, get a worse quarterback, a worse offense, a worse, worse head coach with Allen Robinson compared to Tyreek. Uh, Chris Carson, same age as Tyreek Kill. So and in running back him. years, he is, <laughs> he is completely dead. Um, and we're kind of on the, 
the timeline for him like when does that start deteriorating you know when does he turn into more mike davis than he was just like a really solid value at the running back position for his production so this this to me is pretty pretty clearly it's tyreek hill and the trade would look a lot worse i think for the a rob carson side if todd Gurley wasn't on the tyreek side <laughs> because then you'd have a little bit of a pack adjustment adjustment in the yeah. analyzer too. And this would be almost a difference of like in the other one of a future first round pick as well. Yeah. See, here's the thing with this to me. I, I agree. I am taking Tyreek, but it's really hard because I love Alan Robinson and Chris Carson. Like those are two of my boys. Uh, this is something, the only way I picture this trade is I'm freaking out, you know, I have no depth and I just got an injury. So I'm going to sell my stud for two guys that'll produce. Alan Robinson and Chris Carson will produce. They will score points. The problem is they're tough to trade. So yeah. this isn't something you can do if you plan on making future moves. You will never get, it's, it's not even a will never. You have never gotten the dynasty value of Chris Carson equal to his production. He has always scored more points just because he was like a seventh round pick and He's on the Seahawks who I don't care about draft capital. So they start him anyway, but I mean, it's the same thing. Doug Baldwin, you know, never got the dynasty value he deserved, even though he just kept being a top 12 wide receiver. Adam Thielen. But, He's the what, a running back version of Adam. It Thielen. took him literally making history for people to raise Adam Thielen in their wide receiver ranks. <laughs> like, and then he dropped very quickly once he stopped, but yes. that's, Oh, another man. Well, we go. Stopped, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't you keep like getting 100 yards in consecutive games. I mean, let's That's let's true. face it. You know, all you had to do was tie Calvin Johnson for a record and bam, you're a top five wide receiver, even though you have uh, an up there age and uh, no draft capital. But man, all right, I'm going to stop saying that. I'm, I'm going to stop apologizing that we go on tangents because it happens a lot. So they're just these these people watching are just going to have to get used to it. This is like so going back to what I originally said, this is a trade if I'm freaking out that I have no depth or if I just lost a person due to injury, I'm selling my stud score for two people that still will score me points that don't necessarily have the same ceiling or even honestly, well, we've seen Tyreek's floor is not super safe, but still, usually he has the target safety like the, you know, the target share safety where, you know, he's getting the ball in the game. Alan Robinson can go a game and get three targets and we won't really blink about it. And Chris Carson has that injury concern every single year. Plus, he's just a running back, and he's a 27-year-old running back, which makes you a little bit more concerned anyway. Would I do this if I'm the Tyreek Hill owner who just lost, man, one of the 18 people that got injured this week? I want to say no, but honestly, if someone threw this to me, I might say yes anyway, just because I would justify, well, he just scored six points this week. You know, at least I know one of these dudes will score me six points and I have another guy in my starting position. So I don't hate this. I don't think it's as far away as the the uh, analyzer has it, but I am still on the Tyreek Hill side. I, I just, maybe it's just those specific players, but I can't, I can't say no straight up. I, I am like, insanely like tiptoeing around the answer of Tyreek in my opinion but like you said if the only way that you're making this trade is you're kind of desperate you have an injury somewhere and you need to fill a starting lineup spot with somebody that's a little bit more solid than what you have on your bench you were not a competitor anyway like and and, and what I think that this ends up doing Moving Tyreek Hill for A-Rob and Chris Carson not only hurts your production, in my opinion, in your starting lineup, because I think that Tyreek and whoever you would have, like, let's say you you lost, this is a horrible example, but, like, if you lost Raheem Mostert and now your RB2 is kind of iffy, you know, and now you need to fill it with Chris Carson and you decide to break Tyreek Hill down into A-Rob and Chris Carson so you still have a wide receiver to start every week, and you got an RB2 upgrade in Chris Carson. That, in my opinion, actually hurts you on a weekly basis production-wise because I think that Tyreek and whoever you could have slotted in as your RB2 would probably match or outscore a Robin Chris Carson on a weekly basis. That's just me, in my opinion, on most weeks, just because of Tyreek Hill. And I mm -hmm. think that 
at the running back position specifically, you could find a guy that gets you eight or nine points on any given week and just kind of stream that RB2 position. This also then would hurt you value-wise for Dynasty yeah. because if you fast forward, let's say that you end up not doing well or maybe you squeak into the playoffs and you lose in the first round, you have like the 107 uh, and you're kind of like on that weird bubble of you don't know if you should compete or rebuild. If you choose to rebuild, you're not getting anything for a Rob and Chris Carson. Yeah. Like you're not like that. You're not at all. Um, and then you have that really weird mid first round pick and you're just kind of screwed yourself entirely by moving off of Tyree kill. Whereas I think that you could probably end up being in the same position if you keep Tyree kill still have that 1.07 squeak into the playoffs, losing the first round, but you now have Tyree kill and you can move him for multiple firsts or move him for, you know, a younger wide receiver, or if this, this is in a super flex league and you want to kind of rebuild your quarterbacks, you could do that as well. I think this kind of a trade, if you are desperate for a starting lineup because you are a contender, you're not really a contender. I'm glad yeah. you're here because I just I, I don't speak in such harsh terms. It's just like <laughs> I, I want everyone to be happy. Um, OK, but let me I'm going to switch this around right now because pretty much these are both two trades that we've talked about. Sorry, Todd Gurley, but this is pretty much just Tyreek Hill, you know, for do you think you can trade away Allen Robinson and Chris Carson for Jerry, Judy, Devonta Smith and Darnell Mooney? Yeah, uh yes see i don't think you can like i don't think you're getting the analyzer those says you young... probably should be able to yes and i was going to bring that up you know this is also why i was much closer to like being happy with the judy devonta smith and darnell mooney there is a chance a very likely chance that these 22 year old wide receivers who are talented and have been doing well go up in value even by the end of the season, especially by the end of the season, Jerry Judy comes back and goes back to getting those 11, 12 targets he was getting in the first game and a half. He's going to go up in value. Devonta Smith, if Jalen Hurts can go closer to week one than he was in week two, Devonta Smith's going up in value. Allen Robinson and Chris Carson will never go up in value. They'll probably, the Judy and Devonta Smith will probably be valued over A Rob next offseason. By the end of the season, Judy 100%. Devon DeSmith See, that, will probably be there. That's really my biggest problem with that A. Rob and Chris Carson trade. While, again, I love those guys, and I would be happy to throw them in my starting lineup. You made a very good point that, yeah, starting lineup-wise, it might not be great. But also, dynasty-wise, you're really just tying yourself in a knot. You're sort of kind of screwed <laughs> after that. Yeah. You know, especially, if, I mean, let's face it. If you win the league, it's worth it, right? Winning is the point. Winning is always worth it. But if you don't, you're you're screwed a little because Allen Robinson is going to be a 29-year-old free agent. Chris Carson is still on the Seahawks, which is great. And it doesn't matter if they draft one because chances are Chris Carson's better than that person they draft. But he's the 28-year-old running back who didn't have a lot of dynasty value in the first place. So doing this trade... I'm you made me take the Tyree kill side. You absolutely like I am I'm no longer tiptoeing. I am I am stomping like my kids who are mad at me, you know, right on the Tyree kill side of that one. Running back equivalent trades. All right. So this one's gonna be a little personal. Tyree kill for Saquon Barkley and Naheem Hines in a 14 team super flex. Here's the thing. 14 team Tyree kill 674.2. Saquon Barkley, 716.8. Naheem Hines, sorry, bro, 48.4. Mm. So we have a nice little warning pop up that says, caution, Team B is giving up the highest value asset and the most pieces in the deal. Do you still value Saquon Barkley at an ADP of 11.5 in a Superflex League? I don't know. There's still a part of me that believes that Saquon Barkley can still be Saquon. Like he played two kind of rough defenses in his first two games coming back from an ACL injury. Mm -hmm. um, and ob they obviously eased him in. He played less than 50% of snaps in week one. They uh, bumped that up. I think he played almost 90% in week two. 
um, and just ended up playing Washington, which name me one running back who does well against Washington's defense and Chase Young yep. and all the first rounders that they have on that team. So um, I, I do think that Saquon Barkley can get back to where he was, but it's just, this is super hard because this is probably like an in season move that you're looking to make, you know, because you're disappointed in Saquon, but you can still cash out because Saquon has Saquon's name and still has that name value. And people still do believe like I do where he's going to come back and potentially be Saquon again. But man, I don't know. This <laughs> trade was made um, yesterday, by the way. Oh, From cool. when you're watching this, this was made. This is on Tuesday, the 21st. This trade was made. So this is this has everything that we know in the first two weeks baked into this trade. And I think it's somebody who wanted to get off Saquon Barkley because they're kind of disappointed. And they just moved to an elite wide receiver to move off of Saquon with somebody that had similar value. So I don't know. I don't know where I would stand on taking this trade. I guess it's kind of team dependent, which I don't like as an answer. But yeah, you're cheating. Uh, here's the thing: fourteen teams makes the running back more valuable. Fair. Even if you only have to start one, that's still fourteen running backs off the board. If you have to start two, oh man, this is Saquon Barkley. Uh, again, assuming you believe Saquon is still Saquon, which I am still there. I completely agree with everything you said. The dude's just come, like he didn't really practice. He didn't play in any of the preseason. He got thrown in against two very rough front sevens. And now at least he gets Atlanta. Like this is the week coming up where let's see what Saquon really is. You'll at least see him if he's healthy or not. Because that this shouldn't be that hard of a defensive matchup. Fingers crossed that he becomes at least close to what he was. Is he in talk for the running back one? I mean, maybe not anymore. I think CMC's usage has just eclipsed anything we ever dreamed of for at least this year, next year. But Saquon has a couple of years on CMC. Yeah. If he can come back to himself, he can easily be a top five running back every single season, in which case taking him in that top 14 to 20 picks of a, of a super flex league absolutely makes sense. Tyreek Hill has an ADP of 18.75 in 14 teams per flex. Yeah, if they have a close ADP, which they pretty much do, even if you value Saquon a little less, in a 14 team super flex, I'm taking Saquon Barkley. I'm taking the running back. There's just you know more wide receivers that will score points. Yeah. You know what's great about Saquon, though, is that even at the end of the year, if he's not Saquon and he's he finishes as like RB17 or 18 or something like that, because he's just there and produces kind of every single week he still won't fall out of the top 10 in dynasty running backs because like there's that not a lot of running backs behind him that i think could really bump him like he's are he's already probably gotten bumped by jonathan taylor Definitely. um for dynasty yeah but you know he has the age on christian mccaffrey a little bit he has age on davin cook derrick henry alvin kamara um, he has at least two to three years on all of those guys. He has age on Joe Mixon. He has age on Aaron Jones. He has um, age on Austin Eckler. He has past production that we can rely on and hope that comes back on like most of the rookies from last year. J.K. Dobbins obviously towards ACL. Cam Akers is kind of out of the picture for the rest of his career. Um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at this point People are starting to say Trent Richardson, which I don't like. Um, but that's where we're at with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. That's our DeAndre fault. Swift. We, we we push CEH too high. Trent Richardson actually was up there. Yeah. Um, you know, DeAndre Swift is basically in a 50-50 committee with Jamal Williams. Uh Najee Harris, two games into his NFL career, yeah, but he hasn't looked like Najee that we would have expected him to be in the Steelers back. And they're the same age. And they are also the same age. <laughs> um, Travis Etienne is hurt. Javante Williams probably won't be at the Saquon point next year. Um, so, like, how far does he fall if he has a disappointing 2021? Because I just named you every running back from probably, like, right behind him to RB15, and he has an argument to be above all of those running backs. Yeah. <laughs> like, is he RB6? Is he RB7? So, like, 
that dynasty value is still there for him. Yeah, 100%. So does that put you down to Saquon? I think so. <laughs> yeah, the 14 team go. also uh, puts me onto it that as well. I didn't really, I didn't catch on to that, but I'm glad you did. Yeah, I, it's super fair. Don't get me wrong. I don't think, I mean, this is a difference of a little less than 100 on the trade analyzer. And that's including we're, we we are ignoring Naheem Hines, even though I guess he is a bi week flex kind of replacement. But just to, if it was straight up hill for Saquon, I wouldn't blink. I would be completely fine with this trade. Either side, team dependent, blah, blah. But value wise, I'm going to take Saquon over Tyreek Hill just again because of this lot, uh, league size. Yes. All right, let's move on to the next trade, which is man, you you just love finding these Tyreek Hills and blah. Tyreek Hill and Justin Jackson for Najee Harris and Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, you didn't change the heading, so I'm guessing this is also 14 team superflex. Yep. Here we go. We finally got a close one on the analyzer. So this is 696.4 for the Tyreek Hill side. At oh well, you're making me say that a team value is 666. Um, Najee Harris at 569.1 and Teddy Bridgewater at uh, disrespectful 96.9 wow okay yeah that's rough man I, I gotta be honest what am i taking i this is gonna come down i think i think i think i think this is coming down to the argument we had before with alan robinson and christian mccaffrey just a little bit different um uh, this is a trade that seems like oh crap i just lost Tua. oh crap i just lost fitzpatrick you know one of the many quarterback injuries. If you're saying, oh, crap, I just lost Fitzpatrick, we go back to the conversation. You, right here, no, really. no, no. <laughs> you shut your mouth. Ryan Fitzpatrick has led many teams deep into the playoffs just because he is fun. Like, on pure swag alone, he drags your team into the playoffs. Every year for the past, like, three. I would give it to you if you were like, oh, crap, I drafted um, Zach Wilson, and he threw three, four, five interceptions four. last week or whatever it was. And Zach Wilson Look, doesn't seem. Don't to be bring the your semantics player. into this equation where I'm just trying to talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Keep going. <laughs> so this is what this trade seems like, right? It seems like, oh crap, I need to fill a starting quarterback role because you don't trade for Teddy Bridgewater unless that's the case. He actually has looked better than he has in the past in these past few games. Honestly, I think it's. I don't know. It, it's not like he has physically looked better. It's just that I don't think Denver's running game is working as well as they wanted to. So they, they no. are just passing it more. And Teddy Bridgewater has never been on a pass heavy team, except for the three seconds he played for the, he was on the Saints at one point, right? Like, I can't even remember anymore. He traveled he so much for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So if I'm going to, so let's talk about the downgrade from Tyreek Hill to Najee Harris. Uh, an ADP of 18.75 to 25.25. I mean, that's less than a round. It's not that big of a drop-off. But like you said, okay, I apologize. Najee's 23, Saquon's 24. So there's a, apparently a couple of months difference in there. I don't like that drop. Like, if I saw that Najee was just having bad games or needed to adjust to the pro level, Ben is toast. That offensive line is not good. Now, I know we're not supposed to cook situation too highly into dynasty value, but... That matters <laughs> for a running back, for a 23-year-old running back, no less, because he's yeah. going to hit 25 and his value is going to drop. I mean, that's the unfortunate yeah. truth of the community we play in. Man, this is pretty easily the Tyreek Hill side, even if, because like you're saying before, throwing Teddy in, the, in my QB2 spot and Najee in my RB2 spot, as opposed to just not starting a second quarterback, I'd be fine just getting riding the Tyreek Hill's <laughs> um, cool. of value and just find a solid someone to throw in my last flex spot, even if it's not a quarterback. And again, Justin Jackson's just a throw in. So the 14 team doesn't have any influence here like it did for Saquon with the running back and quarterback in a super flex. Again, it's all right. I base that all on QB2. If you needed a QB1, like if you lost your only quarterback, because let's face it, it's tough to hold on to quarterbacks in the 14-team league. Okay, I feel a little better about it. Yes, the, that's still crazy low for Teddy Bridgewater. And the only reason I'm not really completely feeling the Najee Harris drop is just because of Najee right now. And like you said before, a year in the future, or at least just the end of this season, 
what's going to happen to Najee Harris's value if he's the running back 18 to 24 and they do nothing, you know, by the end of the season, another one of their offensive linemen is going to get hurt because offensive linemen in Pittsburgh always get hurt and they're going to have no quarterback. Like, are you going to feel good about that running back? I mean, not really. So I think it's, yeah. Wow. I didn't know this before, but consider me concerned about Najee Harris's dynasty value. <laughs> Like this just happened live, uh, live on YouTube. Like I just, wow, yeah, no. Like to me, this is. You're right. It should be baked in that the 14 team and the scarcity of quarterback and running back. But I think I'm still just on the Tyreek side. Yeah, this one seems pretty similar, like you said, to Carson and A Rob, where you're moving Tyreek for questionable future dynasty values. Yeah, and the upgrade or projected upgrade that you're receiving in your starting lineup might not be as beneficial as you think. Yep. Especially, like, we we said that Teddy Bridgewater's looked really good. Like, I think he was a top 10 quarterback last week. But Drew Locke is always going to be breathing down his neck. If Teddy Bridgewater, like, just has one or two bad games in a row against, like, the Chiefs or the Raiders or somebody, you know, even in that division, the Chargers even, Drew Locke is going to be creeping closer and closer every single week that that happens so but also this is a team that want that wanted teddy bridgewater because he's a game manager they wanted him because he's safe which means if javante puts it together next week he's like oh this is how you run in the nfl oh cool and all of a sudden he's good for 100 plus and a touchdown a game we're gonna see a lot less teddy bridgewater throwing the ball and that's gonna make him Not what are good. you gonna feel good about getting 12 points out of your quarterback i mean no i'd rather play a more volatile wide receiver in my last flex spot and hope to use the ceiling because it's probably a pretty close to the same floor like you said four points between getting eight points out of wide receiver or 12 points out of your second quarterback shouldn't normally lose you a game yeah yeah i'm learning a lot i like this this was a good <laughs> show and we're not even done yet all right let's move on to qb equivalent Ooh. Ooh, this is a sexy trade. Okay, 12-team Superflex. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle for Justin Herbert. We got names. We got names. Those are names. I'm like, I, I oof. Trade analyzer, 674.2 still. Jalen Waddle only at 174.5, which is going to be going up. Uh, after a package adjustment, we're at 820.7. Justin Herbert, 912.3. We have always said, A, you should be overpaying for the better player in the trade if it's a two-for-one. They are not doing that. Also, you should be paying up for a quarterback if you're not giving a quarterback. They're not doing that. Now, here's... When was this trade made? Do you have it up close or at a point? Oh, here? man. No? Because here's my thing. Justin Herbert, if you have watched the games, has looked great. His throws are insanely on point, and he is doing really, really well. He's not doing that great for fantasy. Like, this guy might settle into a low-end QB1. And in the long run, having a 23-year-old locked in at a QB10 isn't something to be sad about. But yes, if you're drafting him sixth overall. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. So is his value actually 912.3 right now? Man, I'm not completely sure. Now, let's pretend this you was have a week before the season started. Okay, so that makes they honestly, were they were expecting Justin Herbert to be Justin, Justin Herbert. Herbert. <laughs> honestly, at that point, I'm taking Justin. You know, three weeks ago, I'm taking Justin Herbert pretty easily. Right now, now, I can't. Like the answer should easily be Justin Herbert. It's not super difficult to get quarterbacks in a 12 team super flex league. Like we just saw what it was getting Teddy Bridgewater. If you Ben, like uh, Ben Roethlisberger is a terrible. Uh, because he's just prick toast. You know, Tyrod Taylor comes back. Getting Tyrod Taylor is not going to cost a lot of money. I think, I don't remember what happened to him or if he's going to be out for a long time. But he's on IR. Oh, is he? Then never mind. Don't, don't Three go IR, after Tyrod yeah. Taylor. But still, like getting a serviceable player, quarterback, is much easier than giving up Tyreek Hill. And man, I think I'm just in on Jalen Waddell. Like, I, I, the past two weeks, he's looked good. And I'm a fan of that. <laughs> so yeah. I, I really like I think I'm more in on Waddle than I have been in the past I mean I will always be the first to admit I don't watch college football but even of everything I listen to everything I let's face it I don't read so everything I've listened to you know 
I still like I think I like Waddle more than of the amalgamation of things I've heard in the past. Giving this up for for Justin Herbert, honestly, I just I don't think I want to. But I know the value is Justin Herbert. Herbert is tough because I think that he was overvalued coming into the season. We get excited every like we want to pr- pretend like we learned from Baker Mayfield, but we don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, because you can see the difference that rushing makes. I know that that sucks, and we like I really hate the impact that rushing has on a on a quarterback fantasy scoring. But Justin yeah. Herbert didn't have that over the second half of the season, like he did at the beginning. But that was because he was still getting used to the NFL. He used that <laughs> he as a was too back. afraid to get hit, so he ran away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Things happen over the second half of the season that I think showed us a lot more of what Justin Herbert was going to be in 2021. I actually even made a video on this channel about why I thought Justin Herbert was overrated in terms of ADP coming into this season. And we just kind of put him in as the guy right after, you know, obviously like the top five and then like Lamar and Dak. And then it was Justin Herbert because there really wasn't anybody else. Oh, you there's know, definitely people putting Herbert in front of those two guys. There there was, for sure. But, like, the consensus was just that he was just kind of there because after him was a bunch of other statues um, who are much older, guys who are just fine, potential guys in, like, Jalen Hurts, and, like, what do you have in him? And Herbert was just kind of thrown in, like, right there just to be there. And I think that he is a little overrated in terms of his price then and i'm wondering if that has kind of come back down to earth a little bit based on what we've seen over the past two weeks already do you think he's a bit of a buy because he's learning a new offense do you Uh, think maybe you know like it's funny matt ryan another statue now he's old but even like his entire career he's been very he's been pretty good you know fantasy wise the first year of a new coordinator passing yards every year Every yeah. first year of a new coordinator, he's terrible, which Awful. unfortunately is why it's funny he was always bad in odd years because Atlanta would go through offensive coordinators every other year, um, yeah, yeah, which always makes it tough. But like maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe just uh, there's a very big difference in – oh, who was their coordinator? I can't even remember. It was Anthony Lynn's offense, but not anymore. But, I mean, now they're on Lombardi – who Lombardi, yeah. is very different. Like, there was not an X receiver for Herbert last year. Mike Williams was still on the team, but it's just not the way they played. Now, Mike Williams, hashtag Team Clemson, big wide receiver, double fist pump. Like, he's the dude there, and it's a very, very different offense than what they've been used to. And even in the first week with Eckler not getting a target, which, oh, thankfully, he did in week two. I don't think we know what this offense is yet. The problem is, man, Herbert threw some touchdowns last year. And... yep. Those aren't coming right now. Will they? And scored some rushing touchdowns last year, too, that I don't think are coming. Right. But also, Eckler wasn't very much used in the on the goal and line last year. Yeah. Now he is. So, like, this is... I think we need to drop Herbert's ceiling a little bit, in which case, man, I want a top three wide receiver and a dude I think can be a top 12 wide receiver over who we think is a young what... The guy we love to say, Kirk Cousins? <laughs> People are going to hate you for that. I yeah. said maybe. I w- Don't get me wrong. I want Justin Herbert to be Justin Herbert, but mostly because I just traded for him. But, uh, you know, it's it's with definitely within the realm of possibilities. This year, at least, Justin Herbert is not last year's Justin Herbert. But there's also the bigger picture that we may have just freaked out like Baker. Baker literally made records his rookie year, you know, passing touchdowns where he didn't Pete. play. The... <laughs> Not the point. Um, yeah. Because uh, he played more of the season. Come on. But And then Baker turned to trash when he got a new OC and then a new head coach. And now he's sort of finding his foot. Ding. Footing. There you go. And he's doing a little better. Like, we may need to be patient with Justin Herbert. And that's kind of the more me way of saying I'm a little I'm a little worried. <laughs> you know, I don't think we're getting that production we got last year, at least for the rest of this season. Like maybe you'll get it a game or two, but I'm a little worried. 
Yeah. So you're so taking Tyreek? I'm taking Tyreek and Jalen Waddle, even though I don't think it's the right move. I'm I'm torn. Can I not answer? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I think I still want to take Justin Herbert because he's a quarterback in Superflex and he still yeah. has name value. Absolutely should be the answer. That is absolutely probably the right answer, but I don't think I can do it. I don't blame you. <laughs> like if you gave me, I'm about to say like if, if it were Kyler, but I don't think anyone's trading Kyler for Tyreek and Jalen Waddle. Like if it's a dude that's still doing it, that we've seen it, man, even if it's, what would you do if you're Josh Allen? <laughs> Talk like that's the thing. He's still been yeah, he's taken a step back, but we know what he can be. We've seen it, and we saw it for an entire season. And I don't think their OC changed, so we just have to I, was last year an outlier. I would do it for Lamar. Does that help? Yes, because like you said, that's around the same value wise ADP. He's still in the first round, probably top ten ADP. So it's a very similar ranked player. And I pro I would probably do it for Dak as well. Oh, yeah, Dak to me. Which means that I would probably do it for Josh Allen. And Kyler Mahomes, this is not enough for either one of them. Yeah, I know. So I just, really that's, that's it would make me feel better sending away those two wide receivers to get a guy that, you know, I can't afford, that wouldn't be able to afford it from them. Yeah. That was tough. All right, let's go. It's horrible trades time. We need like an awesome do 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 horrible yeah, trades. 12 team, one quarterback. Tyreek Hill comes in at 821. Point, oh no. 821.8 <laughs> for a 22 second and 22 fourth, totaling at 94. No, I'm not even going to put the package adjustment in there because that just wouldn't be fair. <laughs> There's a package adjustment. Oh, that's so bad. So that's what? 103. Let's just call it 103, 104. No, 14. 103 to 821. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Uh, why? Why? If this was two years ago and we thought he wasn't going to play this season and that's why they drafted Mecole Hardman, okay. Yeah, you get out for a second and a fourth. People probably listening to this probably don't remember that anymore. <laughs> yeah. They for forget real. why Mecole Hardman's on that team. You No, 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 no. No, literally no. Uh, -uh. I don't think there's anything more we need to say. I can just know things to say, but this is a family YouTube channel. Why? There's no, there's no, there's. Oh no. Okay. Let's move on to the next one because at least, no, there's no argument for this one either. So this is a 12 team. We'll give it, we'll give it that. It's close. Well, yeah. When you put six pieces on one side, it's going to get closer. (laughs) This is Tyreek Hill in a a 12 team super flex. Tyreek Hill for Cam Akers, a t- two twenty-two seconds, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Van Jefferson. Here's, I really like Amon Ross St. Brown and Van Jefferson. Like as players, I really like them. In their in their positions, situations, I honestly kind of still really like them. Not that much. <laughs> like well. I think we're both on the never again Cam Akers train, just because. Achilles and a running back, but yeah, you I mean, need let's... you need Cam Akers to come back to where we thought he was going to be for this to even make any sort of sense. I mean, I'm telling you, even before the injury, Cam Akers was in the 300s in the trade analyzer. So let's add 200. You're still at 429.7 to 674.2. Which like you need, possible. you need all of this to hit. Oh, yeah, sure. 115 points this doesn't make the difference for the package adjustment. Like, you need all of this to work out. There's no reason. If you're rebuilding, I don't this care. This is a terrible rebuild. Yes. It doesn't matter that you got younger. Sorry. <laughs> like, this... Just because you're rebuilding doesn't mean you sell for scraps. Doesn't mean you just sell for younger and picks. You need to worry about value. Because, especially with second-round picks... Most second round picks are better off being used as trade chips as opposed to actually being used in the draft. If you get right. the 201 to 204 in a good draft year, okay, cool. You hold on to that. You get the 209 in any year, you're probably better off giving me a guy in a 209 for a better player. Like that's probably the better package to do than to actually draft that 209. 
picks and this being future picks and no like if you took out cam Akers and you put in jalen waddle i'd feel a little bit better about it but still honestly one of those would need to be a, okay let's completely change this trade jalen waddle a first a second amon wrestling brown and van jefferson no still won't do it but it's a lot closer like that's that's how off this is <laughs> like a, a devonta smith no i mean like guys around yeah. that later you first need to go value. back up to that first trade we did with judy and devonta smith yeah yeah this is <sighs> I love that's why we have that note. that's why we <laughs> have horrible trades russ that's i love how we end on that all right well thank you for watching the dlf trade show on the hold on dlf youtube channel company guy right now i know you always wear the hat i just chose to wear the shirt today to to make me feel like i fit in too uh i am your host russ fisher at dynasty outhouse he is also your host addison hayes at amaze hayes underscore you like our videos let us know comment on it you want us to do a player let us know comment on the video you just feel like commenting on the video comment on the video you don't want to comment on the video comment on the video anyway we just like hearing from you on that note bye everybody so i want to I, i've been wanting to talk about this for a while in some capacity on this youtube channel so i'm going to add this as an addendum last year i made a trade in my dlf champions cup league where it's basically a three-year window and i was undefeated at that point like i was like seven or eight now um cd lamb obviously at that point i had i had cd lamb lost Dak prescott wasn't looking like his production was really gonna hang around with andy dalton i think at that point too andy dalton actually got hurt so we had like that ben denucci week and the, <laughs> the new Garrett Gilbert was that the other quarterback? Garrett like Gilbert, they had like yeah. a couple quarterbacks playing after Andy Dalton, so I was really concerned because I was like, I'm really gearing in for the, you know, for the playoffs, and I might actually win this, and that would be really awesome for me. So I sent straight up C.D. Lamb for Keenan Allen, oh. and that was the trade I made last year. I said, you know what? I'm just going to take the value hit for the production spike at wide receiver that I project for the remainder of the year. This was also, you know, Justin Herbert was on fire. Keenan Allen was doing really well that point in the season last year. Um, I posted the trade on Twitter and I actually received positive and negative feedback for that. And I actually ended up doing an exercise. I forget who it was. I think it was, uh, I think it was Izzy. Izzy Elkafoss suggested that I do an exercise and chart out every single week whether or not that one decision made a difference in terms of the if I still would have won with CD Lamb in my starting Super lineup. Interesting. Okay. Versus Keenan Allen. So I did that exercise for it, it was at least half the season, maybe just under seven or eight weeks of this exercise. Ne none of the weeks made a difference. Keenan Allen made a zero difference for me. Every single game that I won, which I ended up going, I, I won every game, but one, I lost one game by two points. And that one game I lost CD lamb, uh, wouldn't have changed anything. I still would have lost every game. I won. I still would have won. Even if I had CD lamb versus Keenan Allen. So his point was that that trade um, actually didn't matter to me at all. Like that was not a trade that I should have done because now we fast forward to 2021. Obviously CD lamb is borderline top five dynasty wide receiver in value. Mm -hmm. And Keenan Allen is old. 15, you know, something like that. Like he's 29 years old, still producing, but like, he's just kind of there. And that decision, that trade did not make a difference for me in my starting lineup based on production at all and yeah. i should not have made that deal because now i'd ra i i could have cd lamb now and if i still wanted to move him i could get i could move him for so much more yeah then you know than just that than taking the hit so that's where a lot of that stuff with this tyree kill trade for a rob and chris carson you know like your starting lineup you might think it's going to be heavily affected but it's really not because in in reality in season most 
matchups are not decided by single digit points, <laughs> you know, four <laughs> five, six points where like one start sit decision really influenced that matchup for you. Obviously At least one you, you would know. have made anyway, you know, right. Right. Week one, no one was thinking to start Sterling Shepard, though I'm sure if a couple of people just made that one move, that would make the game difference. But you shouldn't have thought to do that. Right. So that that open that trade and that exercise opened my eyes so much to how not good of a move that was. <laughs> so it's almost like Izzy smart or something. Izzy is super smart. Follow the Dynasty Trade Calculator podcast and yeah. At DTC that, underscore Izzy E, I think he is on Twitter. I think I think that's what it is. Yeah. So that was I, I've been wanting to share that on this channel for a while, and I figured this was going to be the perfect time to do that because we're talking about trades in season. Yep. And players are disappointing you. Players are outperforming your, you know, what you thought. And it's just like, you know, if you make moves for production where it's just single moves like that, like CD Lamb for Keenan Allen might not be the best move. Like you can st still think about dynasty value and what you could get out of those players in the off season and where they're going to be. Because, you know, like I said, with Tyree kill for a Rob and Chris Carson, Tyree kill is still going to be Tyree kill in, in, you know, March of 2022. Allen Robinson is going to be a 29 year old wide receiver and a borderline wide receiver too, possibly on a different team. Chris Carson's going to be a 28 year old running back, possibly looking to get replaced by the Seahawks. Maybe. I don't know. He just, he signed, but you know, that's all yikes. So don't do that just to help your starting lineup. There you go. Dynasty value should always be part of the equation. A hundred percent.